Okay. All right, so I will call the meeting to order at 11.04 a.m. and I will hand that over to you, Richard. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will do my little speech and hang on a minute. <clears throat> Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Um, um, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the, uh, through the um, Amherst, uh, the Amherst town website, www.amherstma.gov. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite past efforts, we will post on the, um, on the Amherst Town website, um, or I believe also YouTube, um, on audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So I call the meeting to order. Okay, and I also just want to make the statement that this meeting is being recorded by the town of Amherst, and if any other persons is doing so at this time, please notify us immediately. Okay. And hearing none, um, we can do a roll call of members. Um, so doing that, we have uh, Chair Richard Morse. Here. Now our, and I apologize for not knowing, um, Lee and Ken, you are both considered a clerk. Is that correct? So Lee and Ken are both members. Okay, yeah. so um, we have uh, Lee Hines. Yeah. And Ken, Hargreaves. I don't want to put, say Hargreaves. it again. Hargreaves. Okay, yeah. Ken Hargreaves. Here. Okay. Okay, so, um, Normally, I would open the public comment at this time if there's any members of the public here. Um, seeing that there are none, we will um, we'll, we'll pass that by for now. And if, if anyone from the public comes and likes, would like to speak, we can open that at that time. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is our motor vehicle excise. Oh, you know Minute. what's not on our agenda is the minutes from last week. Oh, did it again. God. Um, so we can, um, I, do you guys normally read them out loud or do you just approve them no. because you've read them yeah. ahead of time? Uh, gentlemen, have you had a chance to review the minutes? Do we get the minutes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I don't recall, but go ahead. If you guys run. Um, yeah. uh, I looked at them and they are seem to be fine. Um, so I moved to approve the minutes of uh, the last meeting, uh, hang on a minute. Second. Uh, the meeting, the minutes of the last meeting, uh, the date for which was October 14th, 2021. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Now that was part of the package. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, minutes have been approved. All righty. So then moving on, we'll do the motor excise abatements. Um, you all have a copy of those. There are three. Um, we are looking at excise weeks 10, 13, 2021 through 10, 22, 2021 in the amount of $2,995 and 36 cents. Um, as you will see on your list, these are yeah. all, yes. Um, can you share screen? Oh, yes. That Teresa, do you have that up or do you want me to share? Um, hold on. That way we don't have to go back and forth. Absolutely. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. While Teresa is getting those up, I'll just let you know that um, all of these abatements have been uh, approved um, They or, or um, processed. They all had the proper paperwork um, providing that they have... Um, gotten rid of their vehicles and then either transferred or canceled their plates. I'm not an expert at sharing screens here, so bear with me. Sure, okay. sure. That's it's up. So got it. I think you'll want to you're gonna want to scroll down, I think. Yes. Got it. We see your email right now. Go 
back to where you were. What do you mean? Do you want me to? I can share if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah I don't go know back what. To what you, you go back to the what? We're looking. We're looking. I don't know what page. you're looking. I don't. You don't see my page. No, we see your email. Email. Oh. You were on it. Well, let me go. Um, okay, there you go. Is that better? Nope, we still see it. Okay, email. well then you're gonna need to do it, Kim, because I don't know what I'm doing wrong. There, there it is. There it is. There it is. Just scroll, scroll down. Okay, keep going. There we go. There we go. Okay, so there is it. your. Um, if you, Teresa, if you see the little arrow on the right hand side next to where it says "request sign" on the um, middle of the screen. I don't know where you're talking about, Kim. Sorry. Here, let me. I'll pop out. Hold on one second. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Oh, no problem. Right. If you just click that, it'll get rid of this little thing and then it will enlarge. There we go. Oh, there we go. And okay. You can even click on that if you want to make it even bigger. Mm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, beautiful. So. All righty. Okay, so can everyone see that clearly? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So you will see this was uh, the week again of 10 13 2021 through 10 22 2021 in the amount of $2,995.36. I move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that essentially approves our signatures on those. Kim. Correct. Okay. And then uh, the next list you will see here is for excise weeks uh, 10, 25, 2021 through 10, well, it's just that day, uh, for the amount of $69.60. Move to approve that abatement. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And lastly, you will see 11-4, um, it's just again on that day, 11-4-2021, and the amount of $220.94. I move to approve that abatement. Second. Those two abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right, so this that you are seeing here is the rollback tax for map 3C, lot 106, owned by the Stotes family. Um, this is a lot that was in Chapterland, uh, so they have removed it from that. And so you will see this is the rollback tax in the amount of $17,000. $492.42. Um, just a reminder, in case you need it, the rollback taxes for the past five years. And this is the difference of the exemption that they were getting. So this is the amount of taxes that they had, um, the agricultural credit had given them. Um, let me start that over again. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> they have an agricultural credit on their property for farming it. So this is the amount of taxes that they were uh, exempted for the past five years for that property. Is there interest included in there? Teresa, do you know if there's interest included in this figure? I don't know the answer to that. I don't, I wouldn't think so, but I don't know. I'd have to check with. So the law states that. that we're able to collect interest, but I don't know that we have to. Okay, can you check for next call, Kim, and just let us know? Sure. It's, it's fine. I'm just curious if we're collecting interest on these or not. Sure. Okay. So, so just so I understand, because I'm the, because uh, this is not my area, um, mm -hmm. uh, even though I've been here a while, um, this is being taken out of special tax status for what, what, for agriculture. Correct. And so they're essentially paying, they're paying the, um, for the last five years, they're paying the difference between the, the break they got and the full amount of the, the, the taxed land. Is that correct? That's correct. 
and, and why? Okay. What happened? What, what, yeah, so what happened? they they have decided to remove the land. Um, in this case, I know that they're selling off a couple of lots. Um, but in a case of anyone who has uh, any sort of chapter properties, if they remove the land from chapter, so they decide they're not going to farm it for one reason or another, um, they would have to pay the rollback tax. There is some. Um, uh, situations where you wouldn't have to pay the rollback tax, and that would be if the if the land is being sold, but it's going to be continually farmed, then the rollback tax would be exempt. Um, and the other situation would be if you're taking out a portion of the land to give or sell to a child or a family member to build on, that also exempts you from paying the rollback tax. But in this case, um, they're they're removing the entire parcel of land, and um, they've actually split the lots and they're selling off those pieces. So five so why years. Go back five years. Yeah. So that is the that's the regu the rules and regulations that the DOR gives us. Um, I don't know the history of why it's five years. Um, I, I my assumption is because you have to. Um, to join chapter, to, to become a part of chapter 61, 61A or 61B, um, mostly 61 and 61A, you have to actually provide proof that you have made profits on the land over the past year. Um, and then there's there's a lien process that gets put onto the properties, which we'll see some of later on. Um, and then the town has the first right of refusal. So when a property is being sold, they need to notify the town first. And the town has 121 days to decide whether this is a property that they would want to purchase at market price. Um, so the exact reason as to why there are five years of rollback tax, I, I don't have that exact answer because that was provided by the DOR. Um, I'm sure that there's some that's that's um, pretty standard. I know New York State has the same five years. Yeah. I think yeah. it's pretty standard. But the DOR gave you the period. Yes. Okay. It's, it's law. All right. Or, or regulation. Yes. Right. Okay. So we need to approve our signatures on this warrant, correct? That's correct. Okay. So right. moved. Okay. Second. Um, motion to approve the um, our signatures on this warrant for the for the a uh, rollback tax for this particular property featured here, the Stolt the Stoltz property. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Kim, okay. do you know? Can somebody remove just part of their? Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, there you can, if, for whatever reason, um, if you decide that you want to just uh, maybe just not do as much work um, and you don't want to farm the whole land, you can do that. But again, you still have to go through the same process. You have to let the town know that you're going to uh, remove it from chapter. You have to do the the, the rollback tax. Um, if you're going to remove, just like I said, a, a portion of it to maybe give to a child to build on, you just have to let the town know you, but you would be exempt from the rollback tax in that case. Um, mm -hmm. If you, maybe you have a section of land that you're farming for say carrots and your neighbor said, Hey, could I buy, you know, three acres of your property? Um, cause I want to extend my corn field and you're like, you know what? I don't want to use that three acres. So you sell them that piece. You can break that off. That would be exempt from the rollback tax. Um, and then as long as you have a conforming lot to be in chapter 61, a, you can do that. So if you have less than, um, I believe it's 10 acres, then you would no longer have a conforming lot for chapter 61, a. Well, wait, um, so, uh, six, chapter 60, or are we talking 61A now? 61A. Yep, you have to. So in order to be a part of 61, 61A, or 61B, you have to have a certain amount of acreage. Okay. Um, I think, I believe it's 61B, you have to have five acres. Um, and that's 61A, horse. you have to have 10. Yes. We're, is horse, right? That's correct. But we're in chapter 60 here. Not We're 60. in, this is chapter, um, this is chapter 61A, I believe. They were farming the land. Well, uh, hmm. why does it say chapter 60 everywhere? Uh, chapter 60 is the, um, the chapter that explains um, 
property about tax. 60, about 61 too? Also? Yes. yes. Okay. So the, they were in 61. Okay. Yes. So, um, so 61 is a forest management plan. So you would be, uh, you could be cutting trees, you could be uh, doing, you know, Christmas trees, you could, you know, it, you just have to have a forest management plan. So you'd have a forester come out um, and, and do this plan on your property. 61A is any type of farming. So we see on around here, we would see, you know, vegetables, hay, um, you know, that type of thing out on the Cape, you'd see cranberries. Um, so depending on where you are, that's, you know, sort of where, what you'd see specifically. And then 61B is recreational. So that is, uh, leaving its land at its natural state and allowing others to use that space. So just to set the record straight, the assessor certificate for this property, which I guess we're going to, um, we're going to have to sign also. Uh, no, their, their signatures are already on there. Oh, okay. Uh, references 61A. Mm -hmm. So this property was being farmed for crops. Um, so they were in chapter 61A. Right. Okay. Yes. And our signatures are already on there. Have we have we talked about this before? Hmm. Or on the certificate? Certificate. Why don't we wait until we get there? Well, it's just below the the warrant. Oh, okay. Oh, the assessor certificate. So yes, this was probably something that was filed when they um, originally when they went. It looks today. like possibly 919 of 2011. So yes, this was something that was probably on record um, and filed back when they began farming okay. or at least when these owners took over because you have to change it. If, if there's a lien that's filed and there's a new ownership, you have to change the lien as well. All right. Well, so, at, the we just... the, at the bottom of the assessor's certificate, there's an, uh, a, a place for the board of assessors and the three of us are on, our, our signatures are on there. So it couldn't have been that long ago. No, it had to be more recently than that. Slide down, Teresa. Do so we see, see that. Slide it down so we can see what we're talking about. Oh yeah, and this actually shows the rollback tax back. So maybe that was just prematurely stamped. Okay. Yeah, I think I don't know if David had me do that because this is something that went to the um, attorneys because they had to have it in hand to do figuring or something. I don't know. I don't recall. All right. It looks like and that I, might maybe have been I just... maybe I prematurely stamped it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <Well>. fired. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, so we've just approved. Uh, we've approved our signatures on the warrant, right? That's mm -hmm. correct. Okay, so we probably ought to just do a vote to approve our signature on the certificate too. Yep, and you can also, um, the so the warrant, the first page there that you were looking at was to the collector of taxes. And then yeah. the commitment, uh, the notice of commitment, you'll see this, this page here, this is for the accounting office. Nice. Um, and then I guess we could, if you'd like to do a separate vote for the certificate, we can do that as well, or we can just include that in the notes on the vote for um, the warrant to collect as well as the certificate, the assessor's certificate. Okay. Um, gentlemen, do you have any more questions about uh, about this particular uh, transaction? Just, just slide a little more down. Let's yeah. look at the signatures yeah. again. Okay. Those are ours. And probably one. So okay. Teresa has a stamp with our signatures on them? I yes. guess whether I guess whether we should redo this, Kim, I don't know whether if you're fine with it, it's just we're going to approve it after the date we signed it. Yeah. If you want to redo this, we can redo it. But yes, I think um, we should. You, we don't have to redo the vote or anything, but I do think no, that we should probably um, check with David again about why this was done prematurely. But we okay. may want to um, at least retype this and then restamp it, assuming that the approval for the the uh, the warrant and the commitment is OK. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do think I agree. I think we should change the date as long as that's not going to mess anything up with the um, attorneys and, and um, anything that David was already working on. All right. So, gentlemen, do you have any problem with approving our signature on that one? No. No. It's or, just a question. The, the normal process would have been for these uh, documents to come through together, or what would yes. it be normal? Okay. Yes. 
And I guess has the town already said they don't want to buy it? I, I assume that's already happened. I assume that's already happened as well, because when I came, it was already um, the lots had already been split and the um, the process has already been well underway. So I would say, yes, the town has already said that they're not interested in purchasing the property. And okay. Kim, uh, you know, the, uh, do you know where this parcel is? I do. Yes, is this it? is this is off Market Hill Road. Um, okay. If you are headed towards the reservoir, it's going to be on your right hand side. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm so ready, um, I'm ready to vote. I'm, um, um, I move that we approve our signatures on this assessor certificate uh, for the uh, property of, of Michael and Lori Stotes. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so then moving on. Did, did, we we have... did, did we do the. Uh the original yes um, the, okay yes yep i have uh the rollback tax for the warrant um for the collector and the accounting office okay. the uh, commitment for the accounting office um so the next thing on the agenda is our um chapter 61 renewal so this is part of the forest management plan that WD Coles has worked with the state to receive. Um, there are multiple properties here. So you'll see um, almost the exact same wording and lien recorded um, on all of these here. But basically what this is, is um, WD Coles has gone to their forester and said, our plan has expired in the fiscal year 2022 for our forest management plan. Um, and we need to renew that because we we want to continue to uh, farm the property, whether that be, um, you know, I say farm, but I, if they, if they do uh, cutting of the trees, that's what I'm Right. referring to. Um, so it looks like in this case, their plan would renew in January of calendar year 2022 and go through the end of calendar year 2020, uh, 2031. Okay. So here we're just asking you to, um, to agree that this plan, yes, has been submitted to the assessor's office by the DOR and by the owner of these properties to continue farming as as they have been for the past 10 years, at least. Okay. So and you'll see you again, um, there's multiple pages of these. So it's just each one of their properties that had expired um, in the year 2022. Did so I, these, these are the did, ones that Richard will have to come in and sign. Yes. Okay. Did other people get doubles and triples of these things? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these. So you should have quite a bit of them. Are the case numbers the same? But okay, I'll show you when we get to them. I think they are. Uh, no, they're not. They are. Um, I'm not sure we got them all though. It does look like some yeah. of the case numbers are the same. And they're the same property. I think we got duplicates. The question I have, are we missing some? That we should have got. I don't think so. I, I mean, I'll go through them, but I don't think that okay. there should be duplicates in here. I mean, they list three properties on some of these. Well, that's a duplicate they, of this one. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Let me see. That's a duplicate of what one? Next one. It Kim, does look like it does look like there were duplicates. Yeah. That, Kim, that's totally. That's totally oh, different. No, that's those numbers different. are totally. Those are totally different than these. Okay, that's not the one then. We'll get to it as we go through it. Um. I guess the general question, um, can a lot, a parcel, a tax parcel, can it be landlocked? One of these forest managers? Yes, yes. As long as, um, I guess I guess that's a tricky answer because there has to be access to be able to get to the property. So yes, it can be landlocked, but there has to be um, an easement that's granted by the owners with surrounding properties in order for the uh if they're if they're doing trees, the people who are cutting the trees have to be able to get to that property. So if there is an easement that's granted allowing people to cross that particular property to get to the one that's in the chapter, then yes, that's okay. Kim, another general question. Are there any requirements or uh, regulations around the number of years 
that uh, for renewal or the or the number of years that can be requested? There are not. Um, the only requirement is that you uh, so you get a ten year forest management plan uh, that's created by your forester who works for the Department of Revenue. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the Department of Forestry, um, and then they would tell you, okay, in this 10 year period, you're gonna be able to cut the trees this amount of times. Um, and we expect that you'll make, you know, well, I suppose they probably can't tell them how, exactly how much money they'll make depending on what's happening in the whole world with wood. Um, but they'll say, you know, you can cut twice this year. Um, and then maybe the next year they'll say, you can only cut once because we've cut these two sections and they're not gonna be big enough trees to be able to cut. So um, on this one, for example, you'll see that there is one lot with 28.22 acres, and then the other two are not that big. So there is a 10, uh, 10 acre requirement for chapter 61. However, and this goes for 61A as well, if you have a lot that is abutting that 10 acres, it can be any size. So you'll see the second lot here is only 1.57 acres. And then the one below that is only 0.4. Um, so those, as long as they are abutting other lots in chapter that belong to this person, they can be um, what's called contiguous. And so they would be allowed to be accepted into chapter. But you have to have that, that 10 acres to, yes. to to apply yeah okay yeah so so if you do have two acres that uh, two, uh excuse me two lots that are each five acres and they're touching uh you can use those as your one 10 acre lot so do you look at that kim when these come in or do you just accept it as so um I do. I mean, the forester knows that, so they have to make sure that that's the case. But I do just verify when this happens as well, just to be absolutely sure that something hasn't happened that the forester didn't pick up on. Um, but one of, the, one of these is a driveway, which surprised me. It's a little tiny parcel with a on a driveway, which um, maybe that's for access. So, and the driveway <laughs> is not supposed to be included in chapter uh it's just the access way there are little bits and pieces that you that people could say well i use that for this and that and you can you can include it um but generally speaking the now, driveway is, a, is <laughs> not supposed to be included this is a driveway to the house which kind of surprised me and, and what some of these have where they say you know the acres are 28 acres and they're all excluded. So why is it even in there? I don't understand why. Um, what do you mean they're excluded? Um, let's see. I don't know. Let's go through each one, and then I can refer to my notes as we come up with these questions. Okay. Now, so Ken, are you looking at these on a on a plot plan somewhere? No, I just went on the Amher. No, I before the meeting, I looked out at the Am Amherst tax maps. Okay. To see where they were. Mm -hmm. And and some of them definitely are landlocked, but I think they're adjacent to other Cowles properties that do have mm -hmm. access. And so mm -hmm. they can And get that would be one of property. those situations where as long as they have access to be able to get to that property so that the um the logging trucks can get out there, no. then they'd be able to include that into chapter. Okay. So how do you want to do this, Kim? Um, so do you want, so we can either do um, page at a time, or if you want to vote on all of the CALS properties, um, we can do it that way, whichever you are I, most comfortable I'm with. I'm comfortable with doing a page at a time and then voting okay. at the end. Okay. And we go through each page. So, all right. Okay. So. I'm going to go just based on what's on the screen because I have flipped my pages, so I don't know which one is which. So we'll go with this one here first. So the um, map 3C, uh, lots 13, lot 14, uh, excuse me, lot 13, lot 44, and lot 84 for a total of 30.19 acres. So we'll vote them all at the end? That's where I'm more comfortable. Just so Okay. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, so the next one here is 123.99 acres, so just shy of 124. Um, so we have map 9B lots 11 and 12, and then we have map 9D as in dog lots 26 and 27. Again, the same time frame. So these were expiring at the end of calendar year 2021. So we needed a renewal for 2022 through December. 31st of calendar year 2031. Does Coles have these on some sort of rotation or is this what we're going to see? Is it is this they're coming to us once every 10 years or are they do they have parcels on a rotation so they're coming back um, in a year? Or I just not, because be, of being new to the office, they very well may have other properties that are in chapter that will come to us at a different time. Okay. Off the top of my head, I don't know that answer. Yeah, they, de they definitely do have other now, ones. I, I have a recollection that we uh, approved um, a carving out from from some of these prop uh, from some of these lands for solar some time ago. Do the other yeah. gentlemen remember that at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the case, then those particular pieces of property would not be able to be in any sort of chapter because right. they are right. solar farms, right. um, assuming that they're large, they're, they're probably mm -hmm. solar farms. Um, so those pieces we will not see unless they decide to remove the solar and add that back into chapter. Okay. Excuse me for a minute, I'll still be listening. Sure. So here's here's where we're here's getting. A, oh you know, yeah, that's a that's a duplicate. It uh, looks like just a, I just want I have them in front of me, and you know they had two of them attached to each of these piles, so I may have duped it. So let me just see what the next one is. That that's, one looks like the same as well. Oh my goodness! They do send us three copies, so they have one for us to keep, and then we send two back to them, so they can keep one and they can send one to their forester. Um, so this one looks like one we this haven't is, this seen. Is, this yet. is the yeah, this is one that you haven't seen. So this is a total of 77.16 acres. We have map 6B as in boy lot four, and we have map 3D as in dog lot 21, 39, and 84. Um, again, the same time frame. They have um, January 1st of 2022 through December 31st of 2031. I stumble on that every time that's so far away. <laughs> Kim, Kim, that, yes. that, that first one, 6B4, that's the driveway that goes to the house. Okay, I wanted to look that up. I'm glad that you mentioned that because 6B4. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this might be one that I want to reach out to the forester on because I do see that you are correct that this looks to me like it's just a driveway um, and should not actually be included in the um, management plan. Um, cause it does, it looks like it's the driveway certainly that goes to the house, but there could be access to that back lot as well behind it. So, um, this may be one Teresa that we want to mark and speak with the forester about why that was included in the forest management plan, because, um, I don't believe that it should be. And I want to just mark that on my copy. Is that the, is that the only one Ken that you thought was kind of, um, uh, no, I didn't have time. I mean, Kim, I hate to bother you, but I think I'll check all of them. If you can check all of them, because yeah, I mean, part of my concern is Kyle's has been doing this for years. Yeah. And maybe it's a time to revisit and make yeah. sure they're not doing things that are stretching the, the limit. Yes. And I apologize for not oh, doing no. that ahead That's of time. Right. I should have That's, looked at those. Got a lot going on. <laughs> so um in regards to that particular, uh, and, and actually all the rest of them, I will just um, double check these. And if I find that there's anything odd, um, I will certainly bring that back to the meeting. In regards to uh, our vote, um, we I don't can have a problem. I don't have a problem voting provided you check and it. Okay. Correct. Okay, and then actually, um, Teresa, let's put on the agenda for next 
meeting that we're just going to revisit that particular one to see if I can get an answer um, just for a peace of mind that, you know, A, I've done what I'm supposed to do and B, just to find out sort of what the answer is. And, and if they're saying, yes, we, we, we are including that, why? So that we know in the future, if this comes up again, uh, what's going on with that. And when, when you check them, if you can also check to make sure they all have access to a road. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Um, and there may, it may not be super, super clear, um, you know, where the access is coming from immediately, but as like, if they own two properties side by side, one has road frontage, the other one doesn't, of course, they're going to allow it for that to happen. But if they own something that's completely land blocked by people we don't, that, that are not related or, um, you know, it's not the same ownership, we'll make sure that there's an easement somewhere on the property so that they can get to it. Okay. Okay. All right, moving on. I'm gonna keep on going because obviously sure. there's dukes. Yep. <laughs> I apologize, guys. Okay, so well, there's this... the last. This should be the last one. Well, it may have oh, the dukes after go. this, but I think you have that's... to go back one. We haven't seen that. This one. Yep, That's that was the, the one we one. were just talking about. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. So this one is 145 acres. Um, it looks like they're requesting that 98.4 acres of the land. Um, we have across that 98.4 acres of the forest land of the 143 acres of land covered by this be uh, put in chapter. So they're not actually farming the whole 145 acres. So in this case, you'll see um, they've actually done a wonderful job at uh, telling us what is what here. So you'll see the, the column that says total acres, which adds up to that 145. You'll see the excluded areas, which is the next column. And then the final column you'll see is 98.4 acres. So on this, um, on these particular maps, you will see that portions of these lots are not included in chapter land. So they should have uh, the full taxable value on, on a portion of those. So um, you'll see that there are um, certain properties that like the first one, for example, they're excluding that entire property. So that maybe in the past was listed in as part of chapter. So that is something that we need to look at. And if that's the case, we need to change for the fiscal year 2023 we need to change the uh, classification of that property. Um, that's the I, wonder, one. I wonder if that's a solar property. I wonder. That very well could be being 20 acres. That sounds like it very well could be. Um, and so going down the line, you'll see the same thing. Um, it looks like some of them, um, there, you know, we'll, we'll just have to make sure that each and every one of those actually matches up to that certified acre. Um, column to make sure that we have the correct value on those properties. So um, again, something that we'll want to take a peek at, but the forester has certified that that is the allowable um, acreage and lots to be a part of the, the management plan. I, I was a little surprised why they even put 2A on if it's all excluded. Well, so I, I, at first I thought that exact thing, but if it was included last year or the last time they did the plan, okay. that's why they're putting it there. Cause they're saying, Hey, we had it on there last year, but look at, we're taking it out this year. So we want to make you aware of that, that it's okay. no longer being classified as a uh, chapter land. Okay. And so on our side of things, we may have already removed it knowing that there was a solar farm going there, depending on how long, that's happened, you know, the, how old the farm is. Um, the, but, you know, again, that's something I can take a peek at and just see, um, but this is just, that's the forester saying, you know, we're, we're removing this piece and we wanna make you aware of that. Okay. Oops. I think I that's I the to, last one. I guess I wanted to make sure they were on there. <laughs> You did. <laughs> oh, Kim, did you get all the ones you needed approved? Um, so we have to, yep, those are all the ones that, that needed approval. So we just have to have the vote on that. And then at some point, Richard, if you could come in and actually physically sign those, um, yes. and we'll have you sign all three copies of those. Teresa's going to tell me when they're ready, and then I'm going to, I'm going to uh, immediately zoom up there. Okay. And, and, get, and sign them. 
No, how many did we actually approve? I think there's only three. Four. There, there, four. Four. Four? Yes. Okay, so we approved four. Okay. There's, there's five on the agenda. Wait a minute. One, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so we'll just need a motion and a second. So uh, I, I, yes, I have a second. I move, I move to approve these. Um, 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 what do you want to call it? What do we call them? These are chapter land uh, forest management plans. Okay, I move to approve these plans. Second. By the board. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, and then again, um, Teresa, if we can put that back on the agenda, um, just to verify that those that particular lot is okay to be included, and then just the uh, just we can just talk about this last page too, and just see if that 20.88 acres is actually the solar farm, just for mm -hmm. just for a little knowledge um, as to what we're voting on here. So, mm -hmm. um, so the next thing. Uh, we have on the agenda is the discussion of the residential exemption. So although you are aware that the city council has uh, voted to, to not um, do the residential exemption at the moment, um, I did speak with uh, Sean, our finance director, and I've been putting together some um, questions for other communities and just trying to do some research on the residential exemption um, as a whole. And so what I wanted to share with you is that um, I have found that out of the 351 cities and towns in the state of Massachusetts, there are only 14 communities that have adopted this residential exemption. Um, those communities only make up 18% of Massachusetts residents. So, um, and, and just quickly to whip down the list, that includes Barnstable, Boston, Brookline, Cambridge, Chelsea, Everett, Malden, Nantucket, Provincetown, Somerset, Somerville, Tidsbury, Waltham, and Watertown. So out of those 14 communities, I have chosen um, Barnstable, Boston, Chelsea, Everett, and Watertown to actually reach out to and see if they can sort of give us an explanation as to um, what they what their process was, how they decided that they wanted to do the residential exemption. Um, and, and I chose those because they're the most similar to Amherst. And you're thinking, Boston? Not a chance. Um, the reason that I chose Boston, although they have uh, a substantial amount more residents than we do, they have colleges. Um, they also have uh, a very high and low spectrum of uh, um, income levels. So they have a lot of, um, although, like I said, they're not the same as Amherst by any means, they have some factors that we may be interested in finding out how they considered the residential exemption, looking at those particular factors as well as the colleges. So, um, but the others, um, in 2020, the census population in Amherst was 39,000 people. And in um, Barnstable, it was 44,000, Chelsea, it was 40, Everett, it was 49, and in Watertown, it was 35. So those were the most similar sized towns to us. Um, also understanding that some of those have, again, uh, you know, they have either a very low income population or they have a college or something. So that went into why I chose those particular ones. Um, and then what I was going to do was uh, think up a, a set of questions to ask them. Um, you know, why did you adopt the residential exemption? Uh, how did it affect your apartment rentals? So on and so forth. Some of some of the concerns that I was hearing the night that we discussed this, um, and and just sort of find out where their thought process was on that. So um, anything that you guys want to add to that, please feel free to send that along to me. Um, right now, I have seven questions that I uh, will talk to Sean about and find out if there's anything that he's thinking of that I should be asking these communities. Um, and then I will just draft something up to send along and hopefully get some help on why they chose to do that so that we can present that to the town council 
um, later on when we discuss this again. Kim, uh, two two questions. One, uh, yes. can you can you give us a a, a copy of, of what you're planning to send out, and we can yes. respond. One, and what's your scheduling on on, on this? Um, this was sort of, I was really, you know, had a lot of time to work on it when I first came aboard. Um, it's sort of been sitting for a few days and I haven't been able to touch it. So, um, I think, you know, it's, this is something that is up to the town council to bring up, um, to the, to the assessor's office. Again, this is something that's, that's, you know, the ball is in their court, um, so I don't have a specific time frame that I want to make sure that this is done by. However, um, I think that if we certainly have it by, um, you know, the time I would say June, July, um, that would be my hope of when the town council would want to start talking about this again, if they're really seriously interested in um, considering this for our, our community. Um, so I guess I could say that I would like to have this completed and all these questions answered by June or July of uh, 2022. So I think the key, um, Kim, is to make sure you and Sean are on the same length, wavelength. Yes. Because, you know, I sort of recall the council saying they wanted to take this out for public discussion the first half of next year. Okay. I think actually, now that you say that, I think you're correct. So the sooner, the better then get on getting yeah. this information. Yeah, I don't think it's a rush, but I think they're thinking they want to talk to people first half of next year. Right, right, okay. right. And, and now that you say that, I do think that was actually part of the reason that we maybe even put this on the, the um, agenda was to talk about putting something in the tax bills to um, explain how this works, get people's feedback um, and see what people feel about that. So I think you're correct in that I will touch base again with Sean about this when um, he returns. So um, I'm glad that we talked about that. Okay. Yeah. What were the, the cities you're going to look at? Everett, Boston? I was going to look at, um, come on, uh, Barnstable, Boston, Chelsea, Everett, and Watertown. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I think the trick is finding people who have an institutional memory as to why they instituted the residential exemption in the first place. Yes. And that, that actually, so hard. let me read you my questions too, to maybe see if they trigger any other questions for you. So that was my first question was, why did you adopt the residential exemption? Um, the next question was, how did it affect your apartment rentals? And then a follow up on that. How did it affect the low income apartment rentals specifically? Right. Um, question specifically for Boston. Um, what are your th what what thoughts um, went into the college areas when deciding to do this and how did that take place? Um, so so what I sort of mean there is, you know, did you send out questionnaires? Did you you know, how, how did this affect the college? the colleges, the college areas, you know, the, the rentals that are specifically for the students versus, you know, if you have that, something like that. Uh, so that's sort of an open-ended question there. Um, what percent of the average assessed value did you give? Um, because there is a requirement on, um, on that as well. Um, and then a follow-up, uh, why that specific amount? Um, and then can you briefly explain how you presented the information to your city council or town select board, depending on what sort, sort of government they have? Um, and then a follow up to that is, uh, did you feel did you feel like there are any really important points that need to be made when presenting to the the council or the um, town board? Do you have access to what the percentages are? Um, so I don't right now, I haven't been able to do much more research on that. So it's possible that I can, I can find that information. And if I can't, then I could always ask them if they can provide that for us. So we can have a comparison and see what we might do if this is something that our council decides they want to vote through. You know, no, I've got um, several of the things. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Bridge. Well, I was going to say, um, one of the problems that that I can see with the public process is that um, residential uh, residential property owners, um, single family property owners, um, will be the ones that speak up the loudest. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, whether you hear from renters or landlords, mm -hmm. 
um, that's going to be harder, I think. Yeah, yeah. So getting everybody, um, all the, I guess the term they use nowadays is stakeholders in the, in the process, um, getting them all uh, to look at what, what's being suggested or what's being thought about mm -hmm. and then to speak out about it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know that all the voices are going to be heard equally. And so maybe one of the questions that I ask is how did you get, you know, what was your feedback like? Was it from specifically one uh, class of property or, um, you know, was it a mix of, of uh, residences and owners? And if it was just residences rather than owners, how did you get the response from the owners, right. those yeah. who rent the properties? I think a broad question would be, how did you reach out to the stakeholders? You okay. Know, homeowners, yeah, apartment owners, you know, all the stakeholders. How did you reach out to them? Okay. I'm just writing these down because these are great questions. Okay. And Kim, I'll send you a bunch of research that I ran across in the last year or two. Okay, great. About, that would be wonderful. You know, there's a list of all the percentages each city has. And, and there was a detailed report uh, done by one town outside Boston, a research report that gives you a lot of good thinking process. Helps, okay. you, go, helps you go to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Whoops. Um, so I think that was pretty much my, my, what I wanted to tell you about with that. And of course, I stuck my agenda at the bottom of it. There it is. Um, so if you guys don't have any further discussion on that for now, um, I think we could table that for a future meeting. Um, I think we can leave it on our agenda. And then if we don't discuss it at the next meeting, that's fine. We can just table it to the future um, until we can get some information on that that we share with each other. Um, okay. All right, so hearing no other questions on that, um, we did talk about briefly the, the um, availability of our uh, personal exemptions at our last meeting. And I had suggested that we table that um, to talk about in the future. And what has happened here in the office is that um, we have, created a pamphlet that we would like, or we're in the process of creating a pamphlet that we would like to put into the, um, the tax bills. And this just explains um, basically what, what we have for personal exemptions and what your requirements are. Um, it's very brief, but it gives people the idea that there is something there for them if they need the help. Um, and then it also gives, um, I think we did some important dates for the assessor's office. So we talked about, um, you know, due dates of taxes. We talked about when these personal exemptions are due. Um, there was a couple of other dates on there as well. Um, and then we also put in a, uh, a question and answers portion on this page. And this is just a single page. So it's very small amount of information, but something that may trigger someone's um, call to the office or email. Um, so there was, you know, how, do, how do I set up an inspection? Um, can I file an overval on my property? Um, there was a couple of questions that, that had come up, um, as well have... as a very small introduction as to who I am and what the assessor's office does. That is terrific. That's, That's terrific. That's great. Did you, did you have anything to, did you That's have good. a template to work from some past um, so the collector's office had put together a pamphlet that they were also going to insert into the tax bills. And so it was suggested that we use that as well as be on the back side so that we're not actually putting two pieces of paper into the tax bills, but one double sided page. So there's some information from the collector on one side and then information from the assessor on the other. So we had just the formatting of, um, you know, that it wasn't specific exemptions or anything like that because they have their own information um but i just thought you know it might be nice to put out the statutory exemptions so the blind the senior yeah um the elderly the you know the 17d and this and the 41c uh the blind the veterans exemption 
Um, we did not put on there the hardship because that's sort of more of a personal, um, nothing else qualifies, so let's try this. We also did not put the tax deferral because again, that's something that nothing else applies and we wanna do this. Um, but the more common exemptions. Um, and then with the questions and answers, uh, Stephen was actually working on the flyer and he found those questions on our website. And so just wanted to reiterate them. And then we added a couple like, um, what is the CPA? Sure. Uh, so people are aware of what that is as well. And then I just thought it would be nice to put some important deadlines on there because people don't realize that they only have a certain amount of time to be able to apply for certain um, whether it be the exemptions or an overvaluation on their property, um, people new to the area and new to quarterly tax bills also don't know when the tax bills are due. And actually, I've found um, in Greenfield, and, and I assume that goes along with anyone else, people who have their mortgages uh, or their taxes escrowed have no idea when they're actually paid. So when they've paid off their property and they now have tax bills due, it's a common occurrence that the first bill that's due that they physically have to pay goes past due because they have no idea. They haven't looked at their tax bills, even though they're mailed to them. They have no idea what the time frame is. So I just thought it would be a nice thing to put on there. Yes, I, I went through that transition just recently where I now see the bills and pay the bills. Yes, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's something, I mean, you always should be getting them, but it's something that you now have to actually pay attention to. So, um, you know, just a little easy spot to find what you're looking for. So can I just say, I'm extremely happy to hear this about the, about the information going out to taxpayers, because I think it's absolutely terrific. And mm -hmm. so thank you very much for doing that. You're I welcome. Agree. And I think that um, I know in Greenfield, and I think that you guys had mentioned in the past that there was like a seminar that was done at the uh, Council on Aging Senior Center. Senior Center, um, right. Yep. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'd be happy to do that again. It sounded like maybe it wasn't quite highly attended, um, but maybe, I mean, I don't know what the technology is like for seniors in this area, but if we did an in-person as well as maybe a quick little webinar, um, so people could grab it right off our website if they weren't comfortable or able to attend a meeting at the senior center, um, just to explain each exemption and, and, you know, how to get them and when to get them. Um, you know, that might be something as well that we consider. Um, nothing that we need to implement right away, but certainly something that we can think about depending on how, you know, what, what the outcome of this flyer brings. Um, you know, certainly... Just a thought anyway. That's good also. Yeah. Now they, okay. they have a monthly newsletter that goes out from the senior center. Mm -hmm. you, you could put a little article in there too. We can certainly do that as well, or we can add an insert if that's something that they would be um, able and interested in doing. Uh, you know, make it a different color than the newsletter so it really sticks out. And that way too, if it falls out for some reason, they, they say, hey, what's that? You know, um, so that that would be something that we can we can talk about too. Great, that's great. All right, so um, let's also um, leave that on our agenda uh, for the future, so we can um, you know discuss that. I can also make sure that if there is a um, approved copy that you all get a copy of that as well, just so that you're aware. I mean, you'll, you'll probably get it in your tax bills, but you know, just at least that way you have it ahead of time um, in case anyone comes to you with any questions about anything on it. And we can also do, if you guys want to, and maybe you don't, but before or right after the tax bills go out, we could do a quick, um, whether that be a special meeting or not, but a quick just reminder of what each exemption is and what the qualifications are. Um, in that way, I don't know if, if um, this community reaches out to the, the board members as often as they may in Greenfield, but if that's something that you guys are interested in, I'd be happy to um, just quickly go over each and every exemption if, if you want. I think that'd be good at a normal meeting, Kim. Okay. I don't feel any urgency, but uh, okay. meeting in the new year or something. Okay, we can do that. I that agree. would be good. 
Let's let's plan on that then for our January meeting. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so moving on uh, to the principal assessor update, um, I just wanted to quickly touch base about the classification hearing. We all had a conversation that we do have to redo that hearing. And the reason for that is before you're able to have your classification hearing, you have to have your LA-4 and 13 approved by the state. So your LA-4 is your values and your LA-13 is your sales. Um, so the state basically had well, they had not yet even received a copy of those from us. And I think that the reason that this happened was just the um, moving parts of the office. I think that David was um, thinking, you know, I want to get all this done, but I don't want to put my name on some stuff and then have Kim's name on some stuff. So it just totally slipped his mind that that needed to be done before the classification hearing. And I can completely understand that. Um, so what normally would happen in a perfect world is that we would submit the LA-4 and the LA-13 through gateway to the DOR. The DOR would then approve our values, which is the LA-4, and approve our sales, which is the LA-13. And then we could take it to classification. So we would take it to the town council and say, look, gateway approved our, or the state approved our values and they approved our sales. So we're now asking that you approve that as well, as well as voting on whether or not they wanted to have the single tax rate, the residential exemption, the small commercial exemption, so on and so forth. Um, so what will happen is on Monday night, the 15th, um, the town council will just receive all the documentation again and just revote. Um, hopefully nothing will change. And then we can submit the rest of our forms to the DOR for approval. So you won't have to do the presentation again? No, nope. Um, I just spoke with Paul and actually he would like me to just write up an explanation, just exactly what I explained to you guys so that yeah. he can pass that on to the town council um, ahead of time so that they can just make a quick note as to what they're doing and, and why, and then uh, re-vote all those, um, those votes. So then uh, we'll just get the new copies from the, um, from Athena once the meeting is over with the approval of those. Um, and then we'll get a new certification from the town clerk, just stating that the uh, meeting was, was held after those two things were approved. Sounds good. So I just wanted to let you know about that first, because yep. that's an odd thing, something that probably won't ever right. happen again. But, you know, just I think with all the moving parts in the office, it was just a oops. <laughs> yeah, when you asked for the signatures, that that kind of was an alert that we had to go back and redo. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, and so the other thing um, along with that, so once we have that classification hearing, we should be able to submit the rest of our paperwork to the DOR for approval of our, um, our tax rate and our values. And then we can get our tax bills mailed out. So I believe next week, we're gonna be running a test in Munis just to make sure that everything is looking correctly and working the way it's supposed to, so that we're all ready for that when that time comes. Um, and so that's really the most important update for the assessor's office right now. Um, something that I did wanna mention, um, and again, this is something that we don't have to make a change immediately. I just wanted to suggest some things. Um, when looking at our agenda, um, I see that we have specific dates and the, the dollar amounts for the motor vehicle excise. Um, I did get a little background on that just to understand why that was done the way it was done. And I understand that um, you all just like to see that information ahead of time. So you're sort of aware of what it is that you're doing. So what I would like to suggest is that we actually don't put the specifics on our agenda. And the reason for that being is on the agenda, um, if, if we put, for example, if we put these three on the agenda, post it to the website, the community says, okay, they're, they're not going to be looking at this week or whatever, and they, they have an issue with that week. They then don't come to the meeting. We realize we missed a week on that. We should not be voting on that without putting it out to the public. So, um, I, I see what you're saying. 
basically what I'm saying is by making it vague and just putting motor exercise yes. abatements, we can yeah, then yeah, add yeah. weeks. And if people have an issue with it, then they would come to the meeting and they can talk to us. Not that that's really an issue, but more so that we're not being super specific on the agenda and then not following it if we yes, need to okay. add an extra week. That, and that, that also um, allows us to, um, with excise specifically, that allows us to um, add the excise weeks right up until the meeting. Whereas we have, it sounds like we have to post these a week in advance. So that cuts out a whole week of abatements. Gentlemen, do you follow the logic on that? Sure. No. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yes, that sounds so, good. So, I mean, nothing that we have to do right away. Uh, if you want to, great. If not, let's wait and we'll think about it. We can read. Re, um, uh, let's do it. On. Let's do it. Yeah, okay. agree. Okay. Okay. Um, and I appreciate your your so willingness to adapt to me. <laughs> um, I, I just basically, I just wanted to try to make uh, follow the open meeting law, follow, you know, yeah. everything that we're supposed to do exactly the way we're supposed to do it. And this just allows us to have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, not that we're not being honest because we certainly are, but this just allows us the extra wiggle room to pick up that extra week of excise abatements so that someone can get their refund a little faster is all. Okay. Any, anything that makes your workflow easier and quicker, yeah. do it. Suggest yeah. it. Okay. Thank you. And, and yeah. this is good for the customer, for the public. Yes, it is because the abatements are not supposed to, the, the, the refund checks are not supposed to be issued until the board signs off on them. Mm -hmm. um, so this just allows us to move forward a little faster with the week before the meeting. Um, right. So that, that just allows people to get their abatements a little bit faster, which in some cases it's not that big of a deal because it's small, but in other cases it's a couple of hundred dollars sometimes. So it's nice to be able to move quicker on that for people. Right. So besides getting the tax bills out, anything else you're on your mind before you're in? Um, we are looking into next year. We have our revaluation year, which I will be a pro at since it'll be my second year in a row. <laughs> um, only kidding. But um, <laughs> um, so I do want to, um, we do, it sounds as though we have to put out a bid to get um, a company in. So historically, I think we've had, um, Roy Bishop working with us uh, on all of those things. Um, so, you know, that's something that I have to work on that I do need a little help from David just because I've never had to do something like that before. Um, but uh, because, and, and uh, the reason I say that is because in Greenfield, I w had worked with Regional Resource Group, RRG, and that was just included in our contract. So, um, we were lucky enough to be able to not have to worry about the added cost of a reval. Um, so that's something that I will be working on. Um, I am working on, on the side when I have time, um, looking at all the buildings at UMass and trying to get measurements of each and every one to put on our record cards, as well as once I do all of that, I'll be going out to take pictures of each building, as well as picking up anything else that might be on the property that may or may not be taxable because they are, um, they, most of the things that are there are not taxable, but there may be some personal property items, some you know ATM machines, things like that, that we don't realize are there that we could add. Um, not something that is super, super high priority. And I say that with fear that someone hears this and says, what do you mean that's not priority? Of course it's priority to try to pick up extra growth. And that's not what I mean. But I, what I mean is we have the majority of the, the items. Um, you know, there may be a thing here or there. The, the, um, basically what I'm looking to do is make sure that our record cards match the exact, um, information that's there. So on each and every parcel there, there's multiple buildings. And right now we don't have it broken down. So if you look up one of the record cards for UMass, you'll see one page and it will say, you know, X amount of dollars for the buildings. So what I would like to do is take that one record card and expand it out. So if there are five buildings on that parcel, I'd like to have five records attached to that parcel ID so that you can see each and every building that's on the parcel. And that also is going to help UMass if they come to us and say, can you tell us what the value of this building is because we need this for such and such. We can say, oh yeah, look, it's right here. We have this value for this particular building. 
Um, so it's just working hand in hand with them, um, helping to be able to make things easier in the long run. And that was something that Sean had asked of me um, when I first started here, um, saying, you know, it's not not super, super priority, but certainly something that that they would like to be done. So um, uh, you're this uh, you're going to have to hire a um, consultant. Is that right? Or um, next year? <laughs> So that's something that the UMass is something separate from the revaluation. So the revaluation is about the revaluation. Yes. So that is something that we um, generally, I think in the past, uh, Roy Bishop has worked with us to help during the revaluation, just um, giving us a little bit more time than maybe we normally have with yeah. him. Um, and so, but I, but from what I understand, it's something that gets put out to bid. And then yes. whoever, um, you know, whoever the town chooses, if there's multiple people, um, is the person that we will work with. If it's just Roy, then clearly Roy will get the contract. Um, so that's that, it's something that have to that, be included in your. Does that have to be included in your budget request for the? Yes. Office? Okay. All yes. Right. Yeah, I remember that we've used uh, or David has used Bishop before, and yes. and, and, and in the past uh, review. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, those are really the things I'm really still, you know, getting comfortable working my way through things. Um, I'm making a binder of how to do things so that, first of all, for me, when I can't figure out what I'm doing, I can look back at that binder and say, oh, yeah, here, here it is. But also um, that helps with uh, anybody who comes in and needs to do something. Um, and Teresa is actually also working on a binder of how to's um, for her position as well, because um, it's important for someone else. If anything is to ever happen to any of us, it's important for someone to be able to pick up right where we left off and know how to use vision and know how to use, um, you know, the RRC software and know how, you know, know how to do this, this job in a quick hurry if need be. So do you feel like you have enough help right now, Kim? Yes. Yep. Um, David has been coming back uh, as needed. So when I get stuck on something, uh, he's here to help me um, with, with any of that stuff. Vision has been extremely helpful with um, actually coming in and showing me how to use everything. I've been to a couple of, of um, webinars with them as well. Um, we have, obviously we have Teresa here full-time doing um, the administrative um, duties. And then we also have been uh, getting, we have Steven who's been working his way back into the office, which um, we can, if we wanna talk about personnel a little bit more detailed, we can certainly do that in executive session. Okay. You know what would be helpful when you're doing this SOP and stuff? If you could develop a calendar for 2022, you know, a high level calendar that would sure. help us understand what might be coming during the year. Okay. Good idea. Good idea. That would be, I do actually have, and I can share this with you um, from Greenfield. I have, it's just a regular fiscal year calendar that we've been working on with our board of assessors so that we know sort of what's coming and what's, um, you know, what we need to be working on. Um, we can obviously make one specifically for a reval year, but if you would like, I can share this with you um, just so you can kind of see what I, what it is that I'm referring to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Good. I will send that along to each of you after our meeting today. Um, so that's really all I can think of at the moment for the assessor's update. Is there any questions, more questions that you guys have? No, we're coming up on 1217. So our meeting's running a little longer than usual. I just want to mm -hmm. point that out. Okay. Um, but um, That's fine. I'm getting educated a lot here. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty uh, happy meeting. So we're happy to be here. So. Hi. Okay. All right. Great. Well, we can move things along. I think um, if there's no other questions at the moment for the update of the assessors, um, then we can just talk about our next meeting. We have scheduled for 12 nine, which is the second Thursday, uh, second, is it Thursday? Wednesday. Thursday. That would be it's Thursday. Yeah. Are we going to, are we going to go, are we going to stay with Wednesdays as we are? Today? Do you, do you mind for at least for now keeping Wednesdays? 
No. Okay. That so would be wonderful. The, we can certainly go back to Thursdays, um, you know, after January, if that is easier for you. But if we could do Wednesdays for now, that would be wonderful. Okay. okay then it would be. The, then it would be the eleventh. The eighth. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Do we need an executive session today? We do. Oh. Yes, so in our executive session, we have some statutory exemptions to go through. Okay. Um, I think there's not, there's only a handful of them. So I think we can move pretty quickly with these. Oh, I, and you're going to, and since you're a stickler for open meeting, I've got to figure out how to call executive session. You know so um, what we can do is be, we never opened public comment. So um, we don't need to close that. The anticipation is that we will do the executive session and immediately close the meeting hereafter. Um, so we don't need to reopen the public section. So what I will do is I will stop recording the meeting once we have um, um, decided, you know, once we have voted to go into executive session. And then again, as I said, we do not plan to come back into public meetings so we can adjourn the meeting um, once we have discussed the um, personal exemptions. Okay, and you're going to assume that I'm really good at the procedure here for getting into executive <laughs> So all we need to do now is just make a motion to go into executive session. And again, I will uh, stop recording once we have made that motion. All right. I move that we go into executive session. Second. All okay. Those... Oops, go ahead. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right, so I will go ahead and stop the recording of the uh, Board of Assessors meeting um, because we are going into executive session. And again, I just want to reiterate that we will adjourn the meeting um, going after we discuss the personal exemptions. We do not plan to reopen the public session of this meeting. And right. anyone listening, thank you. And I will stop right now. <laughs>